So these are some project submissions from my subscribers, and I'm just gonna give them some of my feedback, and we're gonna go through their projects, talk about what's going well, maybe what can be improved, and what some of the next steps might be. I also wanna commend you guys for actually sending me a whole bunch of work. I really appreciate it. I know it takes a lot of courage to submit your work like this publicly and get it criticized publicly. So for that reason, I'm gonna be nice to you guys. Of course, I'm going to give you honest feedback, but I'm not gonna be mean about it or anything. So our first submission is from Yip Newland. He's actually on our Discord chat quite a bit. So if you guys aren't on the Discord, go check it out. I'll leave the link in the description. So Yip actually did a pair of headphones and we're gonna look at that right now. First impression of Yip's work, we have some really beautiful A plus rendering. We have some pretty concisely arranged uh, art direction here. Very well done in general. The design is really clean. The sketches maybe could use a little bit of work. The rendering is seriously like A plus. And overall, this is very well proportioned, nicely executed design. So one thing I'm noticing is the project brief. So you wanted to create a high-end wireless pair of headphones with active noise canceling. Now, you mentioned that most options are too bulky and boring looking, so I wanted to make a fun and youthful design. This, to me, is not really a fun and youthful design, and I don't think that it's not bulky. To be clear, I understand that there are plenty of high-end headphones that are really big and sort of oversized like this, but if your goal is to make something that is low profile and fun and youthful, this is actually quite a conservative design. So. That's something that you should revisit. You should either change the design brief or change the design of the headphones to fit the brief. Now, for the sake of your portfolio, you should probably just change the design brief. In real life, that's not really how it works. I don't think that your design is boring, but I do think that it's very conservative and it uses a lot of geometric shapes. It's all sort of one uniform color and the product architecture is pretty similar to other headphones. All of these things make the design look very balanced and harmonious and competent, but that's kind of the opposite of fun and playful and youthful. So to be clear, I think the design is good, I just don't think it's in line with it. Now, the reason why it's so important to have something that is in line with the brief is because if you have a client and they are asking you to sort of attract a certain target demographic and you show them something that's completely different, even if it's good, they're gonna be pretty unhappy with it. I mean, think of it this way. If you're ordering steak from a restaurant and they bring chicken to you, you're gonna be like, what the hell is going on here? And it's gonna be a similar situation with a client if you were to do this. So in terms of how to make it a little bit more refined in the headband area, here's what you could do. You could take this and sort of have it taper inward in that dimension. And you could also have it go a little bit from like thick to thin for the headband as well. So I'm exaggerating to show you, but you could sort of go like really thin here and then really thick here. And I think that would help the design quite a bit. Otherwise it just looks a little bit clunky. Another thing that you might consider doing is this is a really nice detail, but you might consider rounding it a little bit, making it just a bit more round especially since in this view, it's so like nice and whimsical and kind of fun looking. That would be my one piece of advice. Another thing that I noticed with a lot of this uh, design is that there are lots of sort of intersecting geometric shapes that very abruptly intersect with each other. So here's what I mean by that specifically. Like right here, this is a very hard edge and it's pretty clear that you probably built this in SolidWorks or something and you just sort of filleted this edge. And that's okay, but if you want something to feel really refined and luxury and high end, you really need to manage those smaller details. They're super important. So you could make this just a bit more rounded off, for example. And like I said before, you could sort of round this off just a bit more so that it feels a bit more deliberate. Um, maybe instead of filleting this edge, it could be more of a continuously curved shape uh, maybe it's rounded instead of this square sort of profile. So right now it's sort of like a square profile like this. Maybe it's more of like a curved, rounded profile. Just an idea. But this is this is the kind of stuff that separates the mid-range stuff, the mid-range headphones from the super high-end stuff. The last thing that I want to go over is this indentation that's right here. 
this sort of indentation right here. And it's really kind of commanding a lot of attention because the rest of your design is so bare bones. So more specifically, everything about your design is sort of based on like these circular and geometric elements. And then you have this one piece that sort of is like a seven eighths, seven eighths of a circle. And it, I don't know if it's necessarily bad or good, but it commands a lot of visual attention. So it's just something to be aware of. I don't know if it's like a volume control or something like a haptic volume control or something like that, but just be aware that that's kind of taking a lot of attention. So overall, this is a really good design that doesn't quite fit with the brief. If you refine the details and sort of change the brief a little bit, this will go from a very good project to an exceptionally good project. Great work. Yep. Thanks for sharing it. Also, if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. It helps me out. You can always unsubscribe later. And it's against the law if you don't, if you wanna watch past this point, that is a true fact. So next up, we have Seth MacFarlane. That is in fact his real name. I know that because I have him as a student. And Seth is actually a really good designer. It's been fun kind of seeing his growth over the years. And that's exactly what we're going to look at next. First impressions, we have Optica here. This is his microscope concept. What I see are some really well-defined models. Sketches could use a little bit of love, a little bit of work, not that great. The illustration here is nicely done, really beautiful renderings, really nice model here, beautifully done model. So this is great, this is a good, this is a great project. So this is great, this is a good project. In terms of how to improve this, um, I want you to talk more about the use case. So like you mentioned how it's used and you mentioned where it's used in these little captions, but nobody's ever going to read this. So really what you need to do, Seth, is actually show this in a classroom. Show me how and where it will be used. And this is important because this is where a lot of other sorts of problems stem from as well. Just as an example, if you look at the charging, um, it looks like it would be stored sort of horizontally, but then it looks like you have to charge it vertically. It looks like you're charging it upright here. So that's a bit strange. You either need to change the charging mechanism or change the way that it's stored in order for that to make sense. I think that you should show another rendering or at least some kind of illustration showing how they're stored. I mean, I understand this is how it's configured here, but it's not like they'd be floating in, in space about six inches above the ground like this if they were being stored. So show me how it's stored. I also don't fully understand how you would control both the focus and moving the stage around. The stage is the area that the actual uh, sample is placed on. I don't understand how you would do that with this one button. What might be better here, Seth, is to just sort of have this move up and down to change the focus, which you have, and then just manually move this stage around back and forth. I think that would probably be much easier to control and much easier to do, and it just seems a lot more sensible to me. I'm also not quite sure how this kickstand works. Like I get that it's a kickstand. I'm skeptical of how stable it is and I'm not quite sure where it it like is stored. Like does it slide into this? I think that's what it does, but it's not super clear to me, especially since there's like a bit of a void right here. So it's not super clear to me how this goes into this or how it attaches or anything like that. One other thing I'm noticing that I just generally like are these intersecting circles as a visual language. I think that's really well done and I think it's worth mentioning just because it's really cool. So good job on that, Seth. I think it's a really interesting visual language. Overall, I think we have a really good project here. It just needs a little bit of love in terms of sort of establishing a clear use case. It's possible that you actually resolved a lot of these things in your design process, but I'm just not seeing it on the pages of the actual presentation here. So next up we have Sean Guo and his Beats smartphone. So let's take a look. So first impression, really beautiful renderings, very nicely done project, nice lighting. Um, the story itself is interesting, although it's kind of poorly articulated. More specifically, nobody's gonna read this text, so just make it big, punchy, bold text and make it much shorter. Nice sketches, I appreciate the nice sketches, and we have a nice SolidWorks rendering here. I'm sorry, a SolidWorks model here. So let's look at this a little bit. I think that what you need to do is make the solution and the story quite a bit more clear. It's not super obvious 
why this is a music smartphone. And you wouldn't even know that it's meant to be a music smartphone with a super unique interaction unless you read these couple of sentences here and looked at this slide right here pretty closely. So that's one thing that's really important to keep in mind. I think that your use case and story that you're telling here is actually really compelling. I agree that smartphones all kind of look the same. They're not super interesting. They're really boring. And that is a, that's a noble pursuit to sort of go after. But I think that but I think that you should do more experimentation around how musicians would actually interact with this device. So right now, you know, you mentioned that all smartphones kind of look the same and they're a little bit boring or something similar to that. And this to me still kind of looks like a smartphone. It's also not super obvious how you would actually interact with this or how a musician would interact with this differently from a standard smartphone. And it's also not clear that it is a smartphone that is geared towards music other than having the Beats logo on it. And also, I don't think that the interaction is super intuitive. I think that it would actually be very difficult to use and I'll show you why in a second. So let me, let me sort of demonstrate to you. So on Sean's phone, there's sort of an array of what look to be LEDs along the side here. And if you were to actually use this, you would need to sort of hold the phone like this in order to not touch them. And then you would have to use your finger here, but you don't have any sort of visual feedback because you have the screen here, and then there's an indicator here, I guess, of what's happening with the buttons. So that seems like a very strange interaction to me. And this can easily be resolved just by building a couple of models and testing things out. But I don't think that this is the solution. So in order to remedy this, look at what some of the interactions are that musicians have with their musical instruments. That would be my main advice for you, Sean. One other thing that's really important is that playing an instrument is a super tactile experience. There's a lot of touch involved with it and there's a lot of sensitivity to how you sort of brush the strings with your fingers or a pick or, you know, uh, lightly tap the keys of a piano or, you know, adjust the subtle nuances of how you hit a drum. It's, it's very nuanced and subtle. And I think that there's a real opportunity to capture that in this design. Right now, just having sort of these swiping gestures I don't think is the best way to handle that. One thing I want to make clear is that just because that isn't typical of a more standard music making experience doesn't make it bad, but you do need to understand that if you go with something that is different from the sort of status quo of how musicians think, you're going to be fighting a bit of an uphill battle and there's going to be a sort of uh, resistance to adopt that technology, which isn't a bad thing, but it's just something to be aware of. One thing that is really well done here is like accurately representing the beats, materials, colors, and finishes. Um, and that's great, but this doesn't really say anything about music, at least to me. I think that, you know, it looks like a well-designed smartphone, but there's nothing about it that says music. So how do you make it look like a musical instrument? Let's get into that right now. So how do we make this look like a musical instrument? Well, this, right here is kind of your speaker and that's very small i would i would make the speaker super obvious and clearly visible kind of like a little mini boom box or something that could be really interesting there are a lot of ways that you can communicate music the speaker idea is one way maybe have like really prominent speakers rather than just these little slits for speaker grills there's a lot of ways that you can do it i don't know what the right way is necessarily but if you make the music aspect of this really prominent, it will really help the design a lot and it'll help to sell it. Another thing that you wanna think about is the physical interaction. So for example, what does a keyboard player do when they're playing keys? What does a bass player do when they're playing bass? All that kind of stuff. Really take the time to understand and look at those interactions. So overall, this project really communicates a strong visual communications skill set. really nice renderings, good sketches, a clearly defined problem. It's just that the solution isn't quite there yet. One thing I want to make clear is that Sean actually had a lot of better projects than this, but he specifically asked me to do this one because he wanted to improve. So props to Sean on that one. He could have just like shown off one of his really cool projects, but he actually wanted to make this one better. So if you want to check out the rest of his work, it's on his website. It's really good. So next up we have Veronica here and she asked me to look at some of her packaging. This is actually pretty funny because I've designed a whole bunch of food packaging before. First impression, I think that this is a solid concept, but it lacks the visual impact that I think it could. Now I get it. 
you know, packaging is not exactly the most exciting thing in the world, but you can still use some evocative images to really sell it. So in terms of improvement, I think that really showing how the packaging is assembled in a GIF would be super important. Right now it's kind of uh, shown in these pictures, but I think that's a really big selling point for the design. Like if we look at this, if the video decides to load, actually this is a great reason why you would want to have a GIF because this video isn't loading when I click it. So um, show it in a GIF, like how it assembles because it shows that you really did your research because when you're a line cook, it's very important that you know, assembling packaging and every step of your job is super simple, super straightforward. And it's clear that you made that happen with the way that this folds and unfolds. You can basically assemble this package in like one or two seconds, which is great work. I think that this process work is really well done, but you might want to present it in a more positive light. So, you know, really photograph it professionally. And I think that'll help to elevate the design. So Veronica, in terms of the design, I think you should probably show some of your research that you did. Um, you show some process, but you don't really explain the problem at all. I mean, it's written up here in a big paragraph that nobody's going to read, but you should actually show us, like show us what it looks like on the line. Um, it's in this video a little bit, but once again, that didn't load. So really what this comes down to is clearly showing what the problem is. I can tell that you understand the problem because I've done a bunch of packaging before for food, but a lot of other people might not. And that thinking might get lost if you don't show it properly and, and show that you actually did the research and you understand how to solve this really important problem. If you actually look at some of the previous projects in this video, that would be a good place to start in terms of improving some of your visuals. It's obvious that you have a good understanding of the problem and then how to solve it, which is much easier said than done. So now it's just a matter of presenting it in a very striking visual way. So thank you, Veronica, for sharing your portfolio. Very cool stuff. Next up, we have Frederick Owen showing us the Adobe Shift. So overall, I see a very research-driven process here. We have a clearly defined brief and direction. We have sort of a matrix here that's hard to read. Um, we have some sketches and, okay. So let's look at this a little bit. I think that these gray boxes are very distracting visually. In fact, they command more attention than pretty much everything else on the page. Your product should be the first read. In terms of the design, there isn't anything super distinctive about it. I think that the stand being the Adobe logo is kind of interesting, but I think that considering this is supposed to be a concept for five years in the future, you could push it a lot further. So I don't know, maybe it's a flexible screen or maybe it actually is a transparent screen that actually conveys information directly onto the environment or overlays information directly onto the environment. I just think that for a concept that's supposed to be, you know, five years in the future, this could be pushed a lot further. I mean, this looks like something that could be made today pretty easily. I think that in terms of sketching, it would be helpful for you to focus more on drawing from the shoulder rather than from the wrist. It'll help your designs feel a little bit less stiff. Another thing that could be useful is that uh, this form that you actually colored in here is much more novel than the final form factor that you ended up with. And I also wonder if these would just be better suited as software UX elements. I don't know that they need to be physical tactile buttons. Maybe they do, but I think if they are going to be physical tactile buttons, you should push them a lot further. So maybe instead of them just being buttons, maybe you can like twist the controls in a special way, or maybe it's almost like a VR controller where you can move it through space or, or something like that. I think just, that just in general, this could be pushed a lot further. Um, the graphic design hierarchy is all sort of messed up. Like I sort of mentioned before, like, First of all, these are much too long and nobody's going to read them. So you should show this more visually. Um, this is very hard to understand. You should simplify this. Um, what is an active explorer uh, is a bit weird because it's like this different typeface that I don't really see shown anywhere else. You really should stick to just one uh, typeface and font style for the headings. 
one for maybe a subheading and one for text. So three in total. Uh, but I see one, two, three, four, five, at least five, maybe six. So definitely pare that down. On that note, everything is also kind of the same size graphically, so there isn't a clear visual hierarchy for where I'm supposed to look first, second, and third. One last thing that I wanna mention is that you should show me how the product works rather than telling me. So show me how it works rather than telling me. This image is getting closer to what I'm talking about, but it's not a super impactful image. Like look at some of Oculus's um, visual storytelling and how they do their art direction and maybe copy some of that and reference some of it and make it your own. So overall with Frederick's work, I see a really solid, well-defined use case. I just think it needs to be communicated a little bit better. And I think the design needs to be pushed a little bit further in some of the ways that I described earlier. Anyway, thanks for submitting, Fred. I appreciate it a lot. Next up, we have Brendan Pragasam. Looking at his website, we see a knee scooter. This is uh, the project that I decided to crit. Clearly articulated problem, awesome. Clearly articulated use case and user. Decent sketches, decent sketches. Decent sketches once again. This is a bit odd. Uh, how, how the design is sort of cut off here. That's very strange. You might not want to do that because I want to clearly be able to see it. Also, when I was looking at this on desktop, the layout was all messed up and pretty much half of the page was not being used. So definitely look at this on different screen sizes because the layout was not nearly this nice when I looked at it on desktop. Getting into the design, you mentioned that the current knee scooter not only poses ergonomic issues, but safety issues. And you say that it's not portable in this little call out. Well, to me, this looks this design looks way more portable than than yours, simply because you have the, these like thin little skinny tubes that are hollow that we know to be hollow, and yours is one solid visual mass. So that kind of throws me off a little bit. Even if it is smaller in terms of footprint, it looks bigger to me. Like I said, the sketches are actually decent, but they're just kind of small and hard to see, especially on desktop, if you look at it on desktop. And then another thing is that this handle looks like it would be really difficult to hold. I mean, it looks really big and quite bulky. Um, I could be wrong, and maybe you built some foam models that prove otherwise, but I would wanna see that in this design. So definitely show that. I'm also not quite sure what's going on with this material texture. Um, there are some issues with the UV mapping, but that means is that these fabric ends are not connecting at each different surface. So that's important that you're able to do that. Although I'm not quite sure it needs any sort of like Kevlar or fabric texture anyway to begin with. The double wishbone suspension is super cool and really interesting. And it looks like you spent a lot of time on it, but it's not very clear what's happening. In terms of improving your rendering, I would strongly encourage you to check out either Will Gibbons or S. Ben Oxholm. I'll link them in the description. I think that one of the things that's really hurting these is your rendering style and the use of textures. If we go into the design itself, we see a couple issues here. Number one, it looks a bit big and bulky. Number two, there's sort of this design character line here and here and here and they don't clearly connect to each other. I guess this is sort of one shape, and then this is another, but this shape is a bit odd, this triangle shape here. So I don't quite understand like what the visual harmony is supposed to be here. I don't quite understand where I should be looking at first, second, and third. And a lot of that has to do with the proportion. So this is sort of roughly the same size and shape as this and this in terms of total visual mass. So you should have like a clear one, two, three read. You kind of have it, but it's not quite enough contrast. And a lot of this of course will be informed by the function as well. And then the wheels are quite small, which I guess isn't a bad thing once again, but it's kind of like a fourth read, even though this is a scooter. So you should be able to tell that it's something that rolls around and moves, but that's not immediately obvious. If we move over to the front view here. I wanna talk about a couple things here, mostly around the curves. Okay, so if we look at this shape here, there are some flat spots in it. Let's talk about that more specifically. Right here is a flat spot, right here is a flat spot, and right here is a flat spot. And then there's sort of an abrupt curve that starts here. 
Now that is creating a lot of visual uneasiness. It's, it's not very harmonious. And if you do it intentionally, that can be okay. There's nothing wrong with angled or faceted designs. It's a, quite a common thing. I mean, look at Lamborghini. But you need to be very deliberate in the way that you do it. Now, moving on even more specifically to some other bigger things, we see that this is off center. Now, I'm not quite sure why it's off center. I think it should probably be centered because it would help to bring some balance to the design. You mentioned somewhere that um, this is a sensor that tracks something with one of your legs as you're pushing with it, I think, or something. I, I didn't quite get it, but make that more clear, first of all. Second of all, um, I think that this is a bit odd, even if it is a functional component, because then you would need one for left legged people and one for right legged people, which is a bit strange as well. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. But pay attention to these sorts of curves and facets and how they change the design. This is really, really important stuff. One other thing is you mentioned that you went through thousands of iterations at some point in your website. And I would love to see at least some of those designs. It would be really cool to see that because it's not really shown anywhere in the website. You show maybe like 20 sketches but you don't actually show any sorts of iterations. And I think that would be super helpful to see so we can understand your thought process. I think the main thing is that this doesn't necessarily communicate portability or lightness, but it's good that you have that as a design driver in the first place. That's really important because it's just important to have a clearly articulated goal as it is to have a product that solves that problem. They're both equally important. So I think you have that first part down. Now it's a matter of perfecting that second part and getting these design fundamentals down. Overall, good work. Thanks for showing this, Brendan. I know you mentioned in the email that you wanted me to roast you. Uh, I didn't really want to do that for obvious reasons. I think that there's definitely some promise here. I think it's just a matter of taking a little bit more time to design though. All right, so last but certainly not least is Daniel Skoglund. Daniel is actually in our Discord chat quite a bit, and he's always asking for feedback and giving good insights. So definitely uh, join the Discord chat server if you're interested in learning more stuff about design. I'm in there all the time giving everybody feedback. Anyway, moving on to Daniel's design. What we have here is actually a concept. So more specifically, this is a concept for the future. I believe it's for like 2174. Yeah, 2174, the year 2174. And what we have here is what looks to be some sort of like drone medic. Even though this is concept art purely, you still need to ground it in reality to some degree. More specifically, I think that the use case needs to be more clearly articulated. So what we have here is like this medical drone sort of helping somebody who's on the ground laying flat. But it's not like what situation would there be where some guy would just be laying on the ground outside where this drone could easily access him? Maybe like in a war zone or something. But if it's a war zone, I don't know how helpful it would be if it was something that was flying. I feel like you'd want something that was terrestrial and like hanging around on the ground so it didn't get shot at. So I think you might want to clearly articulate the use case here. Like what situation would this be used in? The next thing is sort of articulating how all of this works. Now I get it, this is in 2174, so who knows what the tech is going to look like, but I don't think it would have propellers. I could be wrong. Um, in terms of visual hierarchy, I think that this shape is maybe a bit big and bulky. And then you have like these tertiary shapes that are quite small. So you might wanna break up this form somehow. I don't know how specifically, or maybe make these arms a little bit bigger so that there's sort of a more clear one, two, three read. Or maybe it's like, I don't know, this is sort of a base for, all, for where all the arms come out from. And then this is like really tall and skinny. The point is that you want a clear one, two, three read in terms of the visual hierarchy and proportions, even if it is simply concept art. Overall, I think that overall, I think that there's a lot of opportunity to explore some more complexity in the shape. You might want to check out Adan Gurasiu. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but his name is Adan Gurasiu. He has insanely amazing concept art that you should definitely check out. And he might be a good reference. But one thing that's interesting about Adon is that 
he always references existing technology and even takes the time to understand how it works. So his concept work is very convincing. It's very real. It feels very realistic and like something that could actually exist, even if it is just a concept. So once again, even though this is just a concept, you wanna think about who's going to use it, how will it be used, in what environment, all those things are super important. So thank you, Daniel, for submitting your work. It was super cool to see. And everybody else, thanks for watching up till this point. If you're not subscribed already, you should be. Once again, it definitely motivates me to continue doing good work. And I had a lot of fun looking at your stuff.